I underestimated the color study process for this book. What I thought would take me just one weekend, or one week at most, actually took me five weeks. Well, part of the reason was I didn't have all the materials ready, and I encountered a few interruptions. I had to do a few things in between, so I had to pause and wait until I can resume my color studies. Anyway, I've uncovered a few blind spots through this process and figured out a few things that I didn't know previously. So while I was waiting for the paint that I would be using for this picture book, I sought out to pick the type of paper that I would use. Now, I happen to have a lot of bristle board around that I bought previously a few years ago. So I thought I would test it out with gouache, but I quickly realized it's not ideal to use with gouache, or not ideal to use with the type of look that I'm after. Now bristleboard can hold paint, it doesn't buckle so much, especially since I'm just painting in small panels, and it doesn't bleed through from behind. Nothing like that. But my problem with bristle board is when I lay in washes, it leaves visible brush strokes. So it looks almost like a Van Gogh painting where you can tell what type of brush I'm using or what size of brush I'm using, which isn't that bad, especially if that's the look you, you're after. But that's not the look that I'm after. So I realized this paper is not right for me, not for this project. I also noticed that when I use masking tape on this paper and peel it off later, it tears off some of the paper surface. So I tried using a different paper. I tried this mixed media paper, which responds a lot better to the masking tape, doesn't tear off the paper surface when I peel it off. And also, it enables me to move the paint around more freely when I do washes. I just have to make sure that I don't mix in too much pigment with the water because then when I do that, it becomes too pasty. And so it ends up leaving visible brush strokes when I do that. Now, once I got the paint pigments that I intended to use for this picture book, I started doing this really boring process of creating color swatches. I actually hate doing this, but I have to I have to do this to properly acquaint myself with the different pigments so that I can see how they look on their own and how they mix with other pigments and also with white. Now this color sheet, like color swatch sheet, was actually done in a span of two weeks because when I did this first batch of swatches I didn't realize that I I needed one more pigment for the book, so I had to place a second order for that and wait another week. And that's why I have this second set of swatches. But once I was done with this, I then started to do the actual color studies for the book. And in this footage, I'm painting the pencils that I did in the previous video, wherein I have two instances of the same scene, because I intended to use two different color palettes for each. So I would have one palette for daytime and I have a nighttime palette. I was actually quite happy with the outcome, but towards the end, I had a consideration pop in my head. I was thinking, what if I just use one palette, just one triad of colors for the entire book? Because I was flirting with the idea of constraining my tools so that I can simplify my approach. And so that's what I intend to do in my next color study sheet. Let's have a look in the next video.